Whenever you're ready. All right. Okay. Uh, well, welcome to the North Fork Rancheria. This is uh, one of the uh, Indian reservations in Central California in the Sierra Nevada, and I believe it's owned by the um, Mono Indians, right? And uh, when I first started trying to look for an erosion control project for ADAPT uh, about a year and a half ago, I was uh, calling the NRCS people, Natural Resource Conservation Service, to say, who is your rancher, who is your farmer that has no, you know, he doesn't uh, pay any attention to uh, all of the different erosion control things and, and, and all the regulations. And uh, so we looked at a couple different places down in the valley, and uh, when I got to the NRCS office, uh, Darren's boss, uh, Dave Kriedemeyer, he said, oh, I have this Indian reservation, they sold off all the soil on this hillside about 10 years ago, so it's this huge erosional you know, washout, perfect place to come and talk about erosion and how to uh, take care of those measures uh, or in place those measures for Afghanistan. So uh, I would believe January 2012 was uh, when we first came up here and uh, Dave and Darren and a whole crew from the NRCS, we, we put in a series of uh, erosion control measures on this far slope over here that you all get a chance to see today. And I'm gonna introduce uh, what the objectives were on that hillside, how we did things right, maybe point out a few things we did wrong. Um, and so I'm gonna work with half of you today. The other half is gonna work with, with Leaf uh, up on the upper hillside here. And you guys are gonna be installing some erosion control uh, measures. So we'll probably work for about 45 minutes to an How much time do we have here, Paul? Um. Like two hours, hours max? Yeah, yeah, okay. So about 45 minutes to an hour or so, we'll split up uh, or we'll switch, uh, switch over and I'll get the other group and, and, and we'll talk a little bit. Sure. Sure. You can walk down that gully and show them how steep it is. Check it out. Yeah, that's a good point. You better remind them there could be some rattlers. Oh, yeah, rattlesnakes, and I think I had a tick here one time. I'm actually the new guy to Fresno. This is only my second time up here, but I'm a geologist, and when I go places, I, I tend to look and see what happens, what, you know, what's, what's of use for instruction. This is actually pretty neat instruction right here. There's a culvert. I don't know if you can see the wing wall right over there. There's a culvert that's coming down from across the road over here. At this uh, culvert right here, they've uh -huh. actually got what I'd call a check in. You've got your, it's actually a keyed into the sides, it looks like. You could say that those large blocks in back of Charles are keyed into that side. You've got a control section that Charles is standing on. And down below, they've got some pretty large rock for an energy control section, dissipation section. So most of the things of a check dam are there. It's also as water has come up here and hit this check dam, it slows down. And this area right in here is filling up with sediment. So these are all the things to look at when you you know you see something like this. I asked you when I when I talked about check dams this morning, I asked you to remember the one diagram about when you build a check dam, put another one down below it to protect the one up above. Because what will happen is that will tumble out of there. If you don't have something, some way of stopping the water down below as well, you get undermining. Right down below here, it's completely undermined. It's a totally steep slope down there now. It's cut way down below what the normal slope was. If they'd have done check dams all the way down, they wouldn't have this problem. What could you do now to fix this? Plant trees. I guess the only thing I can think of is the armor in there. What do you say, Charles? I, I mean, it's beyond trying to build a check dam. It's pretty darn steep in there or anything. So I guess just armoring in there. I like this as a little instructional device, though. It's, uh, it's pretty appropriate. Just remember the bottom check dam, the top of the, uh, the lower check dam should be equal to the bottom of the upper check dam. That's how we build it. That's not what was built here. So it's failed down below. Eventually this will keep creeping this way and take this out as well. All right, that's all I wanted to say here. Uh, Charles is, like I say, he's been here for years and can tell you exactly what's going on. I'm going to take half of you up on that slope and uh, we'll, we'll uh, mess around with doing some hillside. Hill <laughs> what we ended up doing is putting in just a small rock line here. Our purpose was that we're forming rills here. And naturally what's happened is this has worked. It's not gotten worse, no, it's not gotten worse. But you can see small erosional uh, buildup back of the uh, rock line. 
is uh, you do these things, but what you don't realize is what level contour is on the hillside. It's one of the hardest things to grasp. I mean, it's simple to grasp, simple. But you have to teach the Afghans how to do it. I have to teach you how to do it so you can teach them. So we have one of the most uh, common devices. This is used in all third world countries. Little level here. Wow. I built it. Um, I sell them for 35, 35 bucks, special today's 30. <laughs> you can put these things, let's say you built this tripod. You know, I built it with wing nuts so I could put it on the airplane. I'll take it apart, take it on the airplane. You can build these things, build them down somewhere where it's level. Put it on level ground and then mark where level is. Or do what I did and tape a, a bubble there. But you don't have to tape a bubble, you can make the level mark when you go down below. I'll show you how this works. Need a volunteer, please. Volunteer. Here. Get up here, big guy. Right. Maybe two people. So there's level, pretty much. You'll have to pull the level. Now I wouldn't put a flag in everywhere, except it's for instructional purposes. Flag right here. Get that on the level mark. Yeah, pull around a bit. Pretty level there, huh? It's gonna be tough to push these in. Who's your guy? Did you two make a level line going across? There's another way to do this if you don't have one of these $35 tripods. What uh, Dr. Groninger is doing down below is showing how to measure slope with a, a clinometer. Now, we don't use clinometers over there. These things cost a hundred bucks. I'm not sure why the program bought this so much, but what I've used in Afghanistan is a simple, what do you call it, a torpedo level? You know, it's a simple sight level that you can look through. They cost two bucks, little orange things. You can buy them online for two dollars a piece. We would buy handfuls of them for a watershed restoration project and send them out. So, two more volunteers, please. Two about the same size, about the same height. You got you are about the same height. Yeah. Why don't we? Why don't you start? Let's see. How do you do this? One person here. We don't have to be the same size. Same height. Shoot on her. I think just about her lower button on her shirt. Something like that. <laughs> now you would put a. So you're going to put a stake in here. All right. So when I shoot. Now, as you go across, I don't see shit. you go across that way. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, 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 oh. Now, what you're going to do is look into here. Okay. These clinometers on the right side, they have two scales inside. You'll all have a chance to look through them when you're in the other exercise. As you look through these, it'll show you a level line. It's a zero. You go up and down, you see the zero bubble. You see the zero bubble? Yep. You'll have to stand right here again, please. Yeah. Right there. So what is zero on her? Is her belt line. Okay, great. So as she goes across the slope, go across about four feet. Now you want her to go either up or down so you get that exact same spot mark. Oh, he doesn't move? Yeah, he doesn't move. He can, in right. fact, he can shoot this. All the way. Yeah, if he's if he's down there, he could shoot her all the way around the hill. Go right. up a little bit? I'm just doing a, yeah, I just want to do a... Right to the yeah, you guys can stop right at the end there, and that'd be good enough. This is We're not going to dig here or anything. I just want you guys to have the exercise of putting that in. Come down a little bit. Right there. It's a good zigzag. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about some of our measurements here. If we're too close together, perhaps. That's a good zigzag. Oh, that thing's right on, man. Yeah. So yeah. So the tripod's the best way to do it, right? Yeah. 
Oh, and I think awesome. with this thing, if he was further back, so further probably, away. So I'm probably doing it wrong because I'm looking for her belt line. For yeah. Zero, and that's the way I'm supposed to Whatever it was when you started, that's where you wanted to keep as she goes out. So I keep Whatever part, you know. So I probably keep yeah. mine. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you shot and her foot was zero. I'm not going to call this. Good. I'll call this a is in structural uh, glitch because you will. I, I'm, I'm sure you can all see whether you're doing it right as you do this. This method is. is that's good enough. Okay. Hey, hey Mike, get a. I think start digging over here, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we're a couple off on this one. This <laughs> line here. This line here looks very good. Yeah. If you step back here? with your clinometer here. Let me see if I can make it work good. If you actually step back with a clinometer and shot, you would probably, you know, you could get to a point where that was level and, and, and ensure that was level. But you have some idea of the concept of how to put Come a level down. line in. You can't do this without some sort of an instrument. I swear, if you're going across yeah. big hillsides, you will go up or down. Unconsciously, you will go up or down. I think you're on a level line. But if you yes. go up or down, you're going to make an erosional path. You're going to be working cross purposes. So let's make sure we keep now this thing straight. Right. You can yeah. make this device without having yeah. a little bubble. Good. Yeah, yeah. If you made that device, all you'd have to do is nail a couple sticks together, really, and then take it onto a level place, take it down to your fob, somewhere where you know the floor is level, put that thing and make a mark there. Right? And then yeah, use the bubble it makes it a lot easier, though. Yeah, the bubble's yeah. pretty good to cheat yeah. with. Yeah, that's. The other thing is swaying a lot, you know. And you guys, you know, the, the internet's everywhere. You can get those bubbles. You buy two of them for $1.39 at Ace Hardware. So if you're going to do projects like this, you know, you can have that stuff on your fob within a week. Do that, I would. And again, these hand levels that you can use, that you can buy for $2 a piece. Torpedo levels, you look through and it has a level bubble on it. Those things are invaluable for setting level lines. Okay, would you pick up the flags? Yeah, please. And uh, we're gonna go up top with these shovels in. A little bit of us. Are you supposed to see her or just only align it to zero? And when when you do this, when you look inside this, and you all get a chance down below, you look inside here and there's a there's a hundred on the yeah, left I, I saw and a zero on her. the right. Then her. you have to line, you have to find out where that is. I'm looking at her stop, please. Right now the zero is right above is your first button on your shirt. That's zero, so I would send you across the hill and have you, you know, stop at intervals. And you'd have to go up or down to make, I'd be holding this at zero. I'd make you go up or down until, until that button on the shirt was across that line. Let me ask you on the um, stones here, I mean, what determines is the slope determining how many, you know, like you got, it looks like you got about maybe two lines here, three lines of stones, but what determines how many stones you're going to put across there? Actually, you know, that, that isn't ideal there, but it's, it's sufficient. What I would like to see there at the time, if we had, I would have three stones would be ideal. Just a simple three stone tripod. Two big ones, one on top. Okay. Smaller stones to fill in with the holes. That would be ideal. So we didn't stones, have... So the, yeah. so the bigger ones be up on top and the small ones behind? We'd have two big ones. In the beginning, right? Yeah, two big ones here and one on top. Okay. Yeah. And that's how I do it. And then uh, on the upslope, you put in the smaller stones on the upslope. Right. Rather than the downslope. But... You can't go wrong. Just anything like this, what that has stopped now is it stopped these rills from continuing. Those rills had started, and two months later, they're nothing. I don't have the history on the site that you'll hear down below. They've had a lot of success with erosion control down below. He can talk about that. But we've had some, some right there. And uh, I'd like you guys to help me dig a ditch up here to stop a little problem we've got. And for future classes, I'll be bragging about that we did. So. To the top. Well, we don't. Uh, yeah, we'll need that. Thanks. You betcha. There's actually a path right around this way. We don't have to bushwhack. I thought we'd do a little exercise here. What I, the only thing I want to do is, I think we're having a little bit of erosion problem going down this way. I don't know what this gully was built here. Is it a path? Is it a gully? Why was it built? I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's causing a problem because water's coming down this way. Looks to me like water's coming down this way and maybe also flowing out this way. So I thought we'd start up in here. 
measure uh, something level across here. Let's dig one of those little ditches, hillside ditches I talked about. We'll dig it here, foot deep or so, not very deep. We'll throw the soil on the down slope. We'll pack the soil by foot. And we need a second guy to set flags. You know, does the forestry do this for the trails, like the trail system? Because sometimes like when you're hiking, you see like a board and then two spikes coming out for erosion of the hikers. You know, yeah, I think so in some places, but we have somebody here who can answer that question better, but he's on the other team. I know in Washington State, I see that all the Yeah. It's a ditch about, oh, let's, let's make it about two feet wide. It comes across here. Comes across here like this, parallel to him. Kind of digging a terrace down. So we'll throw the soil on the down slope and compact it right here. Let's see how, uh, a little bit further. Actually, why don't you stop there? I don't know how much time we'll have to dig. And those other guys have to do some work too, so. Last one. So what we want is about a two foot wide ditch dug here. We'll have the berm right here. Kind of. Uh, I don't mind if that's there so much. I don't. It, it could be. You know, if it was easier digging, I'd say take that whole thing out too, but it's mainly that the bottom of the ditch is level. We'll check it again with the tripod here in a bit. And then build up this side. You know, over there it's mostly a sandy soil. You don't get this stuff that clumps this hard and sets in. What this stuff has in it is fines and clays and stuff that you don't find in most parts over there. You're dealing with a more sandy soil over there and, and uh, you just stomp it into place like this, stay forever. That chart that I had in the board this morning, it'll show you how far apart these ditches are. I think the maximum depth, even on the very shallow slopes, is something like 30 meters apart, maximum separation. I, I didn't bring a copy of that table with me, but on a slope like this, we might have one here. The next one would be clear down at the bottom. And again, the purpose is to get everything to stop here and infiltrate. Erosion stops here. Some of this soil thrown in there. In case you didn't make it perfectly level, yeah, we're going to stop the water there. It's all, it's all about stopping the water right here. The water stops here. Okay, a ditch plug. Imagine this thing being 100 meters long, stretching away the heck. Of it. Every every 15 meters, we're going to put a plug in. Okay. So you know, every 15 meters is going to be an isolated section of this thing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I see. So you're yeah, just so we we uh, have insurance that this thing doesn't run up or down. Sure. Okay. I've gone into places in a, in a province and gone up to a small village and said, "Is there anybody available here to work?" And every single male, 12 years and above, shows up and works. And you go, "What do you guys do during the day? Are you a pinochle or you know, what do you guys do during the day?" Well, the women do most of the work out in the fields and stuff. The men are working. You know? So the men actually turn out. They'll do this work. They'll work like dogs. I've seen these great projects up in the field doing watershed work where the kids bring pots of rice up at noon and stuff for the workers. And they will absolutely move rock all day long. It's okay. You got 15,000 meters of trench. You're paying a man four to six dollars a day. Let's call it five bucks a day. How many meters can you do in a day? Can you do 20 meters a day, let's say? So 20 meters a man. You can figure out how much this is going to cost to do this ditching. Uh, it's not that expensive. You can actually build check dams. Harry Bader, I was talking about his work up in Nangahar, where he uh, devised what was called the uh, tree army. He actually had those people up there doing uh, check dams with large rock for $48 a dam. When we told the uh, the local ministry that uh, he was mad he wanted us to pay him more money he didn't care if the work was done he thought the people should have been paid more but actually the people were happy because they were doing something for the community and they were making money it was, it was a win-win situation uh, so you can see that not that expensive to do you can put a lot of people to work they have to put down the rifles to do this and they'll gladly do that 
but a lot of people that work for the community. And this and a couple check dams, even on a small, like that one slide that I showed at the very end that had the colored, you know, areas where we were going to do check dams and hillside ditches. Small job like that, you can throw this in for 5000 bucks. you know. So just think of that as you go up to a community, and what does that community need? It might need small projects like this. It might only need five of these ditches spaced 15, 30 meters apart, three or four check dams, and you've done a world of good for that village. I, uh, I, I came after working with the Corps uh, for a year and a year and a half, they told me that I had approved 450 projects worth over $250 million. But what I think the best projects were we did over there were these small things like this for the community that improved their water resources and got them all working together. So that's, uh, I believe my own bullshit. <laughs> it works. Well, let's get right. a water and wait right. for those guys done. Here and uh, we put together this uh, erosion control project because uh, we wanted to have some kind of hands-on for you guys when you're here. So you just sit and watch PowerPoints all day. You gotta sweat a little bit and learn something. And I have pictures in my presentation tomorrow of one of the SEAL teams that we had here last spring actually doing some of this work in Afghanistan because when they weren't kicking in doors, they realized they could help some of the villages they were in by doing simple water management projects. Um, so I'm going to walk you down this slope. We're going to just kind of talk about the structures that we built here, similar to what you've already built up there, but it was a whole lot easier on this slope than apparently you had up there. It sounded pretty hard up there. Yeah, like concrete. All right, so uh, let's move down this first slope. We'll go to this kind of middle part of the berm, and I'll, I'll talk about what we did here. Okay, um, so what? when I talked to Dave Creedmeyer, the NRC guy last year, I told him I wanted, I wanted a really badly eroded spot, okay? We need to, something to fix. So what happened is, is that uh, the school is right down there. And at the end of the day, the school kids will walk right up this area to the after-school programs here at the, at the uh, reservation office. So they kind of had developed what we call in recreation a user trail you know, user-defined trail, and it wasn't landscaped or anything. And although this doesn't look like much right now, this has gone, I mean, 180 degree turnaround. This looks so much better now a year later than it did when we first started. So January of 2012, uh, we came here with Dave Kriedemeyer, a couple people from the NRCS office, and we decided that uh, we were gonna start at the bottom of the slope. Okay. There's this big controversy. Do you start at the top of the slope or the bottom of the slope? Uh, Dave Kriedemeyer was the director. He's the regional director of the NRCS, Natural Resource Conservation Service. He felt very strongly that we start at the bottom of the slope to give a good foundation so that there wouldn't be anything washing out uphill. I'm from the old school of forestry that you slow the water down the minute it starts to pick up speed. And where is that? At the top of the hill. So we compromised like good federal employees. We compromised and we started at the bottom. And we're going to walk you down there in a second. And, uh, oh, I didn't even mean that. Um, we started at the bottom with two big uh, water bars. And uh, then we kind of moved up slope. So um, before I talk about what we did up here, we should probably go down there. And as I, I will walk down on this right hand side because we're now creating our own user path. Uh, around the stuff that we fixed but you can look off to the left as you go downhill there were gullies on this thing 15 inches deep mm -hmm. that through the last year of ADAP trainings we had people like yourselves bring rocks down from the top of the hill and we'd have a rock pitching party and fill in all these gullies so we've done a huge amount of work here and you as you can see all the vegetation it's greened up fairly nicely I mean it I'm telling you it looks 180 degree difference than what it did when we started so we'll walk down to the bottom of the slope talk about what we constructed there, the pros and cons of it, and then we'll move up slope and talk about what we did up here. Any so questions overall? Done? Are, are you done then with... Um... No. Okay. No. I mean, there's there's more water bars that we could put in here. Yeah. Um, 
the NRCS office actually had designed like a stair-step landscaping with railroad ties. Yeah. Um, and the reason we haven't gone with that is because the funding just isn't there right yeah. now for the railroad ties. But that would be the ideal thing is to have a stair-step approach to this uh, tied in with like railroad ties. Yeah. But yeah. that's the problem. And I want to talk about railroad ties in just a second when we get down there because that, that's one of the issues. And you had a question? Before and after I do, and I, I have pictures in my talk tomorrow to show you that very simple exercises like this can have a huge impact. So I have pictures from the very first day we started this, and you'll see what it looks like. Okay? Yeah, in the morning, first one. All right, watch your step coming down here. So as you look at these two water bars, think about this morning's discussion from Leaf as to what a couple of those key components of the water bar should be. And tell me if you think these are right or wrong, or somewhere in the middle. What are a couple of things that water bars should have, and check dam should have? Uh, well, should have a like channel. A channel. channel in okay, the they should have some kind of control feature right here to make sure the water runs off the center. What else? It should be tied into the bank over here. Okay. Tied in mid the area below it to absorb the uh, energy dissipation, energy, yeah. right? Okay. And they, they are keyed in, they are uh, pounded in with, uh, we made our own handmade stuff, out or uh, little, um, I can't even think straight. What am I trying to think of? Stakes, Stakes that's the word, yeah. Um, so we staked this in. Now, the last group said it wasn't keyed in, and t believe it or not, they are keyed in. I think the upper one could probably be keyed in a little bit better on both sides. It probably should have been extended out about another two feet. Whereas this one is pretty well keyed into the banks, it's probably not going to go around. And in the last year of rainfall, it, it actually hasn't. Um, when we first designed these, these things were sticking out of the ground probably a full four or five inches. So you can see that erosion has occurred on the hillside and it has deposited all this nice soil behind there, okay, as well as the one up above. Uh, so they've done their job. They haven't caused any more erosion down, down below here. Um, you can actually see this trail right here. I don't know if it's animals because I don't think kids would be going that way. Or this could be water that's now causing sheet erosion across the top of this. So this probably, we need more, a little bit more erosion control on this hillside. A um, couple of things about this. Well, this gentleman here. What is the main problem with this and why this wouldn't work in Afghanistan? They'd burn the piece of wood, they wouldn't use it. You, yeah, that, that wood would be heating homes or a, a sill somewhere in a, in a mantel piece. It would not be utilized for this. And if you build something like this in Afghanistan, you'd come back a day later and the wood would be gone. Okay, so you don't really have the wood resources over there. Um, and we didn't want to go the route of putting in railroad ties because that would be completely um, you know, ineffective in Afghanistan. You're not going to come across, there's not a, mi a mile of railroad in that country. Okay, but we start at the bottom, it seems to have worked, um, and I think generally we did a fairly decent job of putting them in. Another thing that John Greiger pointed out while he was down here with the other group was uh, notice the vegetation that's filled in this area right here. You now have like a, you've augmented a little bit of grazing resource, and notice how this stuff is greener than everything yeah. around it. So there's actually moisture down in this thing. So that shows that water is infiltrating down into the groundwater. And there's more available water for these to photosynthesize later into the season than everything around it. Okay, so that's another kind of feature of these particular structures. All right, so this is a water bar, a check dam, if you want. Um, it's really not permeable, whereas check dams are meant to be like a sieve. You want the water to slow down and drop the sediment out. This thing is much more of a dam uh, because we didn't want water to kind of start uh, causing real erosion in between the things. So it's, it's a much more of an impermeable thing, hoping that the water goes down into the ground. All right. Now, as far as spacing, we kind of put these two fairly close together. Um, but Technically, the top of this one is basically right at the bottom of the other one, so that's the way it should be. And if you did that all the way up the slope, you'd probably have 30 of these things, like a stair step, all yeah. the way to the top, right? So an awful lot of work would yeah. go into fixing a hillside like this in Afghanistan. It can be done. You need to organize the, the villagers. 
talked to like the Malik or the, the Mullah, have a little Ag Shura. And I talked to the last group. You could go to a hillside like this in Afghanistan and be talking about everything but the hill because the Afghans wouldn't even recognize that this is an issue. They don't see erosion as a problem. It's just something that happens. Um, so in walking around farms, I would see erosion problems and say, well, you know, we could probably do an afternoon's worth of work and fix that, and then you wouldn't have sediment getting into your water canals and you don't have to clean your canals out as often. And then once they figured that out, that you could do fairly simple work to make big, big bang impacts on the landscape, they kind of bought into it. But educating them to the point that that erosion is an issue that they should deal with, that's the first hurdle because they won't recognize it themselves, okay? So now, hate to do it, let's all go back up to the top of the hill, right? And we're gonna talk about the slope up above there. Um, yeah, we'll go back up there and talk about those water bars. Does this area get snow? This area yeah. does get snow. We've been here in, when the hillsides are, I mean, Yosemite is about 30 miles north that way. Se uh, Sequoia National Forest and National Park is about 20 miles that way. So we're up in the, in the snow country here, for sure. Any questions about these structures? Yes, sir. Are they still effective now that the mm -hmm. sediment is poured up and kind of made a level? Or yeah, I mean, <clears throat> what you're pointing out is that you know that soil is going to start sloughing over the top of that thing in time, right? Um, so that tells us that we have to do more erosion control up the hill slope to keep that from filling in, and, or, or fi filling in is fine. We want it to kind of come to the top of that level of the dam, but we don't want it blowing over the top. So yeah, you're you're right. Hopefully this is causing infiltration, you know, allowing the soil to, or the water to, to just move down through the soil column. Um, but it doesn't, to me, you know, like if it was still a lot of erosion, this would be covered. There'd be soil blown out all through there and that's not really happening. So the fact that there is a little bit of erosion here tells me that we probably should put a few more structures in here, but then to try and keep from having to do that, we moved up slope, and that's what I want to talk about. Why I started at the top of the hill to keep the keep the water from ever gaining any velocity to start picking up mm -hmm. soil. So that's the big thing. Yes, ma'am. You said when you put the logs in, they were four inches above the ground on the backside. Yes. Yeah. And then how long did it take to fill in that four inches? Uh, it actually rained a week after we were here. We were here like the first week of January, and then the ADAP was like the fifteenth. And you could tell that water had already settled behind it. Um, I haven't been here since June of last year, so it looks a lot better than, than I remember it to be. Um, but that's because it's had a whole growing season on it. Um, I would say probably took about six months to eight months maybe to fill in behind that. Yeah. Anything else? Good question. All right, let's head up to the top of the hill quick. took four soils back in the day my professor said always start at the top of the hill to slow the water down before it ever picks up steam so there's different parts of a slope okay we've kind of got the upper ridge slope and then right where there's a break point in the slopes the amount of slope this is called the shoulder okay kind of like this idea so once the water breaks over the shoulder that's where it picks up steam and starts making big gullies so I told Dave, all right, we did that one first. The very next one we did was this water bar across the top, okay? So the idea here is that we slow the water down and get it off the site and not allow it to move down slope, picking up steam. So here we kind of got this water bar that starts about right here and moves across and then angles down. They personally would really like to see the straight across on the contour. And I don't know for what reason why we build it this way, but we kind of build it at an angle so that it would move water probably off and then down onto that harder site over there where there's rock and there's grass. Um, and then Darren, the NRCS guy said, Dave, the NRCS people would definitely want it like this because NRCS doesn't want to impede the water. They don't want to build a dam either. They want to slow it down and move it off site. So I guess that's, you know, a little bit of compromise. All right, so this one works nicely. All, it, all we did was have four or five people like yourselves just working with a couple picks and mounting stuff up on the downhill side. 
people going along with rakes and shovels kind of tamping it down and you can see it's nice and compact very little is growing on top of it and it's held up even with kids still walking over the top of it it's still pretty much doing its job now notice that these are a little bit further apart why is that possible what is it about this slope that makes them to be able to be further apart it's not as steep is that what i heard you say yeah. okay it's not as steep this is about an 18 percent slope so we can have it much further apart and still work whereas down below that's a 35 percent slope and you need to have them very close together all right so uh this was built probably by one of the groups last february or march um and then uh last time i was here in june with the adp we built these other two up above here And you can see that they're very simple structures. You can put one in in about 15 minutes, you know, with the, if you got the right tools and um, a little bit of know-how, you can put these things in in no time. And again, they're holding up very nicely. It doesn't seem to be much erosion. Um, in this country, or this part of the country, you know, they get mostly snow, maybe a couple of rainfalls a year, that's it. It's like in Afghanistan, most of the water you get is snowfall um, and only maybe one or two major floods. Uh, so this thing has to hold up, but if it doesn't, again, these are temporary structures. They're not meant to be permanent. You got to come up here once a year, walk your hillsides, and uh, reestablish these things to make them work better. Okay? Um, these are just simple water bars, and teaching Afghans how to make them is a lot like teaching you guys how to do them. You know, you just need a little bit of know-how, show, show somebody how to do it, and then they can build all the, all the water bars you want. Okay. Questions on this? Are, are these sticks over here? Is that part of it too or just... Uh, just no, try? this isn't it. Um, the landscaping is done by the uh, Civilian Conservation Corps for the uh, reservation. So they get, they probably have a group of people come in from the reservation and work with the California Conservation Corps. Uh, why do they do that? You know, incidentally, anybody know? Yeah, it's fire, right? Fire protection. Yeah, yeah. because this is an extremely fire sensitive place will go up. Well, you can't see much of it's all behind the two drone. That whole far hillside burned about three years ago, and you can get huge erosion after big hillside fire here. Um, so uh, they come in and they clean this out so that if a fire ever got started on this hillside, it wouldn't burn all the houses down and stuff. Um, and the very first time I was here, it was much thicker along here, so they've actually done quite a bit of clearing and uh, moving that stuff out. Um, but this is a lot more vegetation than you'll see in most parts of Afghanistan. That's for sure. Okay. Any final comments or questions? No? Who did the most work up there? Huh? <laughs> There's always a competition to see who, who moves more stone or has more shovel time. You guys aren't giving it up? Okay. Cool. Well, that's all I have for you, actually. You guys? Thank you. Yeah, that's where I went to, basically.